issues that are of concern to us as in how have young women and other people reacted to her excellency taking up this role of leadership um, and we also want to know what the current realities are for women and girls in tanzania um, looking at uh, how the country wishes to see the shift in her leadership um, the woman being the woman at the helm um, in southern africa leticia over to you so yes, like with my role as the head of research in the Tanzania Feminist Collective and with the collective itself, we've definitely been very excited by the possibilities that exist with having um, our first uh, woman president here in Tanzania. And on the first question of how have young women and other people reacted to Her Excellency Senya Suluhasa taking to leadership, um, that's a really good question because there's been a lot of excitement with um, because we've seen um, young women are seeing themselves represented in the highest office in the country. So it's been invigorating in a sense because, you know, like most all our presidents before have been old, like older men. And so now to have a woman in office is sort of signals, signals a shift, you know, and this excitement is not only, I think, seen in um, young women, but also young people, like young people, regardless of gender identity, um, because I think it signals a shift. Um, in sort of what is possible. We're seeing so, like representation actually happening in real time and not just reading about it. So I think that this has been very invigorating, very exciting. I think on top of the excitement and inv inv invigorating, I think as a whole people are sort of, um, it's a time of reckoning, I believe, because we're sort of young women, young people in general, mostly young women, however, are asking themselves, um, what, what do I need to do maybe to reach to that level? What, what, what is in place that is blocking me to reach where I need to go? And so I think it's, I think this sort of energy is necessary and, it, and even though it was there before Samia, um, Her Excellency um, Samia Sulu Hassan um, took on leadership, um, it's this feels like a sort of catalyst of at least of reckoning of thinking through, um, you know, what am I, what have what have we been taught as young women to you know to believe to believe is true to so us to maintain the status quo, you know what is our what are our lived experiences? So I think there's been a lot of questioning and, and reckoning and like looking looking at why like why 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 do I need to go with this route? Why can't I think beyond that? And if I can't, if I do reach a roadblock, why is this roadblock even there? Um, I think too, in terms of um, the changes and like this this change of Samia Sulu getting becoming president, I think representation is very important, and um, I'm hoping, and I think a, a lot of young women share my sentiments that this is the beginning of a change and of difference, you know, in and how we move forward as a country. Um, and we're lacking, I think, in a lot of ways in terms of representations in, um, like for example, people my age, and I'm 24 and below make a majority of the population, yet we're not well represented in the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch. However, now that we see that, okay, like this, this person is able to get there. Okay, how did they get there? And how, and what can we do sort of as a country and people in those positions, you know, what can we do to so us to make change, you know? Um, and also another thing I think um, in terms of the reckoning, I think people are also not very excited as well because, because of that reckoning, because of that questioning. I think um, these sort of bioessentialist ideas that, you know, men are inherently aggressive or better leaders and things like that, that, that um, perpetuate the gender binary are called into question. And, you know, people are also using that as like, maybe she won't do a good job because she's a woman and things like that. And, you know, that sort of sentiment wasn't there in the past with like, oh, if, you know, if this person's a man, they won't do it well. So I think people also aren't happy because it's like their worldview is being challenged. And even though Sanya Sulu is, is um, the, the, our president is a small, it, this moment is is still short. I think we ha we have a lot of leaps, like a lot of leaps bounds to go 
able to get where we need to go. Um, and I believe change happens from the ground up and not from, from top down necessarily. So I think with Hakseb um, Faisamiya Sulu Hassan taking on leadership, I think there also needs to be uh, more of a change um, in terms of um, making sure the people that aren't often listened to, especially women who come from rural or live in rural communities are actually listened to. And um, for like the, the policies, whatever policies she enacts, whatever laws she changes actually prioritizes people who belong to, uh, within like the, 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 at the intersection of different marginalized identities. Um, and on the second question, um, in terms of what are some current realities for women and girls in Tanzania that civil society in the country wish to see shift under her leadership? Um, I think that's a very good question because, you know, just having her there won't, doesn't mean that change is going to happen like the next day. Because for herself too, she needs to maintain the status quo so that she can, to, in, to some extent, ma maintain the status quo that exists so that she can maybe create the change that she needs and also to protect her position. Um, so in terms of the current reality, I think there's a lot of issues that girls and women face and like people who are socialized as women and who you know, maybe don't identify necessarily as women, but were socialized as women and girls. Uh, one of the main things I think that I feel like needs to change is the silencing and not believing of women and girls. Um, I think this is a huge issue and um, a lot of the problems that arise, I think in our society is that silencing and of, you know, people who belong to oppressed groups and specifically young girls, they're not, often, they're not believed, you know, and not often believed at least. And so having that, like creating a culture for that and that can, that I, um, I'll explain how I believe this, lift, how the lifting of this culture of silence can, can happen. So I think firstly, having, you know, communication and um, sorry, not communication, community education. Yeah, so community education is a variety of issues. I think the first thing is sex education, for example. Um, having mandated sex education that is age appropriate and, and inclusive, um, this will help with the current reality of women and girls of people having you know, unwanted pregnancies, people not knowing what contraceptives to use, not knowing um, what options are available to them. Um, so on top of that, on top of sex education, also as well, having, you know, se sexual health care, you know, making sure that people are able to get the services that they need when they need them without vilifying, this, without vilifying one service over another. Um, I think that's very important because when people are involved, when people are informed, they are able to make informed choices. And that I think will, play, will be, enable people to have a voice and then also the for, people, for the people who are empowered to be able to listen to people who don't often have a voice. Um, another current, rea current reality is um, women not, especially women from impoverished communities who tend to take on roles such as being a domestic worker or house girl. Um, they're not often given the wage that they deserve or that, yeah, that the wage that they deserve in terms of the work that they have done and they're often um, mistreated and abused. So I think that would be, that, that's something I wish to see shift under leadership where there are, you know, maybe some sort of workers union. You know, I think there are examples in other countries as well. Um, so that, you know, so people, so they don't feel left alone, you know, when they go to work and they, and they don't feel sort of as captives in their workplace, you know, because of a lack of options. And I think, um, on top of that, too, like connects the house girl, like you know, domestic work, like issues and how they're abused and mistreated in, in households and underpaid as well, is um, having like community centers, you know, that prioritize childcare, so that you know maybe there reduces the need for having maybe somebody have to come all the way from somewhere far away to get money, making sure that you know there's. Um, not only are you know, there opportunities for people to have, for women, especially young women, to have work and then also to have safe workplaces, but then also even if someone can't work and when someone can't work, they're not going to, you know, be hungry or you know not be able to fulfill get get their basic needs met or their needs met because because there's there will already be a system in place that will help help them whether or not they want to look for work or not. 
I think, and I think prior, I think for um, Her Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan's main priorities should be with girls and young women, especially in rural communities, because they make a majority of women, you know, in the country to like to focus on those communities because they're not often focused on and to whatever development goals or whatever sustainability goals should like most definitely have their voice in because they're they're the ones who by they're the ones who who aren't often listened to and and a lot of these issues that I've talked about for them I mean life and death in a way that people with class privilege or maybe who live in urban communities it doesn't mean the same way so I feel like for her to focus on um, and people in from impoverished communities, people from rural communities would be um, most beneficial to the country and also to the advancement of, um, you know, right, like human rights in the country as well. Yeah, thank you.